What's up everybody, how's it going? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a topic that keeps popping up on my channel. Ever since I made my very first appearance on YouTube this year on TechLeads channel, people have been asking me about this. And the topic is math. How much did my math background sort of help me when I was first uh, trying to learn how to code? Now, before we actually dive into that topic, I do wanna answer one question that's probably on your mind right now, which is, why have I been shuffling this deck of cards here for the past 30 seconds? And the answer is pretty simple. See here, I've got a uh, blank deck of playing cards here. Every card is blank. They're all blank except for one. There's one card in this deck that's got the word uh, math on it because that's what we're talking about today. And uh, the reason I've been shuffling the deck is because at this point I want you to be very well convinced that this deck has shuffled so that when there's one card now that just sort of flicks out of the deck and happens to be the one with the word math on it, you're gonna be impressed and you're gonna smash the like button right now. So let's talk about math. A lot of people have heard my story of how I wrote my very first line of code ever just around six months before being hired as a software engineer at Google. By the way, if you haven't seen the video that I made on that topic, I'd encourage you to check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. And they wonder did I have a huge advantage because of my math background or specifically my math degree over people in the same situation without a math background or without a math degree? Now, I've given a lot of thought to this subject and I'm hoping in this video to dispel some of the myths and misconceptions that I've seen about the topic uh, to acknowledge or admit a few concessions and just overall hopefully make you uh, better informed about how much a math background or a math degree, a math university degree, uh, carries over to learning how to code and just general software engineering skills. Just so that we're all on the same page here, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in mathematics from the University of Pennsylvania. Now, at UPenn, I think that they required 12 credits, if I'm not mistaken, which means 12 courses in math to graduate. I think nine of them were sort of decided on, right? They gave them to you, and then three of them were sort of electives. They had to be related to math, but you could pick them. So I'm gonna very quickly run down all the courses that I took and when, just to give you sort of a clearer idea of what exactly my background was. My freshman year at Penn, I took two math classes. I took Calculus 1, as well as a sort of elective, a proof-based class called Proving Things Analysis. Then my sophomore year, I didn't take any math classes. That's when I was doing like all kinds of other stuff. Then my junior year, I only took one math class, uh, Calculus 2. So at this point, you might be wondering like, when the hell did you take all of your math classes? Well, I took basically three quarters of my math major's math classes starting at the summer before my senior year and then during my senior year. So during my summer before senior year, I took Calculus 3, Calculus 4, and a class called Financial Derivatives, which was a finance-based math class. And then finally, during the senior year, that's when I sort of went like all in on math and I was like dying. And I took Advanced Calculus 1, Advanced Calculus 2, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, a graduate level class called Math of Finance that was like stochastic calculus. It was really difficult and kind of annoying. And I took a class called Complex Analysis, probably my the, the class that I hated the most. I, am, I have nightmares of that class. Fun fact, the professor in that Complex Analysis class um, is a Google employee now. He works at the New York City office and I've seen him in the hallways and thought, hey, that's, that's the guy. Okay, so I wanna cover this topic in a very structured way. So let's start by answering very quickly whether or not the math degree helped me land interviews at Google or any other companies. And I don't think that this is a very contentious question or issue, but I often see people confuse that with whether or not a math degree helped me learn to code faster or become a better software engineer. So did it help me land interviews? Probably. I think a math major is a STEM degree, science, technology, engineering, math. STEM degrees are typically viewed pretty highly. So I would say that it likely helped me land interviews. That being said, I have seen firsthand a lot of other people with non-STEM backgrounds or non-STEM degrees, people who went to law school or people who have you know, degrees in English or philosophy who went to coding boot camps, for instance, and now work at Google or 
just in the general software engineering field. In fact, my skip level manager, meaning my manager's manager at Google, had a background in creative writing and poetry, not at all engineering or STEM. So yes, the math background probably helped, but it's by no means necessary. So now the much more interesting question, does a math degree help you learn to code much faster? Does it help you pick up software engineering skills much more easily? And my answer is, hmm, yes and no. So let's talk about the knowledge aspects of software engineering and of mathematics. For most subfields of software engineering, there is absolutely no knowledge carryover from math to them. And here again, we're talking about knowledge, not cognitive ability or problem solving ability, we're talking about knowledge, right? If you look at more specialized fields within software engineering, like working on the front end, for instance, or working on infrastructure, you're very likely gonna have to use tools or frameworks or languages like React or Angular or Kubernetes or Docker. And all of these different sort of tools and, and technologies require a lot of knowledge. You have to learn them, right? Even take a computer science major and they very likely won't know how to use these different technologies. And all of the knowledge you need to use these technologies is not found in advanced math classes, purely and simply. Like truthfully, and I'll put probably a few like pieces of knowledge of my advanced math classes that I remember on the screen here, and you'll see like there's just no carryover, right? You know, group theory or uh, from algebra or, you know, the Cauchy theorem from complex analysis, there's just no carryover to, let's say, learning React or learning Docker. Now on the flip side, there are some subfields of software engineering where admittedly there is some or even a lot of knowledge carryover from mathematics to them. A good example is machine learning, AKA applied statistics. I took a couple of classes in machine learning at Google. By the way, Google's a great place to be if you wanna learn machine learning. Uh, but I took a couple of classes there. I also started dabbling with the Udacity nano degree in machine learning a little while ago. And machine learning relies heavily on math, especially statistics and some parts of calculus uh, for at least you know the introductions to machine learning and so there no questions about it having a math degree going to be super helpful but most people when they go through let's say a coding boot camp like i did they're not learning machine learning i didn't learn machine learning during that coding boot camp a second example of a subfield of computer science or software engineering where yes there is a lot of math car carryover is algorithm analysis more specifically advanced algorithm analysis. In other words, you know, past the sort of algorithm knowledge that you need for coding interviews, if you go a bit beyond that and you go into really uh, deep sort of complexity analysis, for instance, then yes, having a math background is gonna be super helpful. But again, overall, for the person who is just entering coding and wants to just get into a normal software engineering career, you very likely will never need to go that far into the theory, right? And that's why, for instance, on AlgoExpert, we don't cover you know, these very advanced math proofs for the complexity analysis of quicksort, for instance, because it's just not needed even in a coding interview at Google. Okay, so now let's talk about problem solving ability. A lot of people will say that software engineering is at its core problem solving. And I think I agree with that. At the end of the day, when you're a software engineer, your job is to take problems and find solutions to them. Typically those solutions involve writing code or designing systems. But then people will say, Math is the same thing. Math is also sort of problem solving at the end of the day, especially maybe proof-based math. And so that's why having a math degree gives you a huge advantage uh, when learning how to code because it sort of develops that problem solving ability. And this is where, mm, I'm not sure that I entirely agree. My two main counter arguments here are, first of all, there are countless other fields where you are also solving problems and also sort of flexing that problem solving ability. As an example, non-STEM fields, right? If you're studying law, right? Or if you're taking the LSAT, which is the exam that you have to take in the US to, to become a lawyer or to go to law school, there are a lot of sort of like logic based questions that 
really test your problem solving ability and that's sort of like it's the same thing right it, it's it's sort of like math no longer has any advantage over over law there uh, similarly, I think other fields like, you know, if you're into debating or if you are uh, studying philosophy, I think all these fields also involve problem solving ability where you have to, you know, be careful not to make logical fallacies or not to, uh, you have to construct very sort of solid arguments, right? And again, here it's like, does math really give you an advantage over those fields in terms of developing your problem solving ability? I don't think so. And to be honest, there are tons of non-academic activities that heavily rely on problem solving and that develop your problem solving ability that also might have a lot of carryover to problem solving ability for software engineering. Video games. There are a lot of video games, especially puzzle-based video games, that rely a lot on problem solving ability and that I, I would argue have, you know, that same kind of like problem solving ability carryover to software engineering. But so now this brings me to my second point, which was that I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what a math degree is, because I think that ultimately the, the sort of fundamental problem solving ability that we're all sort of in agreement about that software engineering demands is really developed after high school. Like I think that, you know, past, for instance, high school level math, you have all the problem solving ability that you really need. You know, an example that I would give for me is, I did, like I said, you know, 75% of my math major my final year before writing my first line of code. I genuinely do not believe that had I written my first line of code a year before, I would have been, I would have had like a far harder time learning how to code. You know, at the very beginning of my college years, yes, I was a different person. I was probably way less mature, but was I less smart than I am right now? Was I less capable of learning how to code? I would argue not at all. I would argue that I was fully equipped with everything that I would have needed, except maybe like the interest or the passion or the drive to learn how to code. So let's summarize everything. Overall, I think that having a math degree, or any other STEM degree for that matter, will probably be a little bit helpful when trying to land interviews, especially at the beginning of your software engineering career. I think that once you have a couple of years of work experience, your degree will become totally irrelevant. But at the very beginning, it might be helpful. As far as whether or not the math degree will give you a big advantage when trying to learn how to code or trying to pick up software engineering skills, I really don't think that it'll give you that big of an advantage. I think that if you are just entering the industry right now or, or, or getting into coding and you don't have a math degree, you will not be at a disadvantage. You will be struggling just as much as the math major next to you uh, when learning what a for loop is or what an API is and how to design one. If you do intend to get into more specialized fields, more math related fields like machine learning, then yes, having a college degree will, or college math degree, will certainly be very helpful in helping you pick up those concepts because you just, you will need much more advanced math knowledge there. With that said, I hope that you found the video informative. If you have thoughts on this video, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you disagree, I'd love to hear from you. I welcome constructive uh, conversation and debate in the comments, so I, I would love to hear from you, especially if you're someone who does have a math degree or a physics degree or something like that, who did go through something similar to me, you know, learning to code after that, and who completely disagrees with me. I'd love to hear from you if you're that person. Otherwise, see you in the next video.